Yo, what's up? My name's Morgan, this is my basement, and today I want to share with you something I'm really proud of, and that's my achievement collection. I've been hunting achievements on and off for about 15 years, with my first achievement being in December of 2008. So with that anniversary rolling around, now's as good a time as any to actually share what I've been doing and what I enjoy playing. As you can see, my gamer score is only 126,000. Now, I know some people might be thinking that that's extremely low, but I'll tell you what, it's not about the size of the gamer score, it's about the quality of the achievements. With that said, let's actually get into it and just kind of take a look into the past and see what I've done. And let me share my memories with you. I'm going to try to focus on the games that have incredibly difficult achievements or just completions that I'm really proud of. And we'll skip some of the fluff in the middle. Let's just say there was a time when I was a achievement hunting hobo, renting games from Blockbuster for easy gamer score. Those days are long gone, but it has tanked my completion percentage. So I'm going to try to not focus on those. I do want to say right off the rip though, Dante's Inferno, the servers are now closed. And unfortunately, I was not able to get all the multiplayer achievements done before I left for my vacation. So this game will never be completed fully, but I will try to get as much of it done as I can. Five Nights at Freddy's 3. So I actually recently played Five Nights at Freddy's 1, and I beat it, and honestly, it wasn't that bad. You know, I think it took me about three hours to finish Five Nights at Freddy's. So I decided I wanted to play another one, and I played Five Nights at Freddy's 3. Now this game is known for this particular achievement, Survive Aggressive Nightmare Mode with 0.15% of people completing it. I'm gonna be honest with you, this game in general was significantly harder than the first one in my opinion. I saw people saying it was the easiest, but there's no shot. People are crazy. This one was way more difficult than the first one. And I'll be honest with you, I think I enjoyed it a lot more because the mechanics were so much more involved. But overall, I think this game's a pretty good completion and it's got some sick gamer score. 200 gamer score for an achievement? Don't mind if I do. And that's one of my more recent completions. Borderlands 1. Now, like I said, I don't wanna to focus too much on games I didn't complete, but man, Borderlands 1 was such a stunning game. If you played it back in the day, you know. Borderlands 1 was the meta. And I will say, whoa, we can't look at the achievements. Huh? Okay, well, we can't look at the achievements for Borderlands, but I will say there is an achievement in this game for completing these very long gauntlets where you have to beat like five waves and each wave contains like three sets and each set contains like five rounds. So it's a very long time. And I remember being in like the eighth or ninth grade and I remember telling my cousin that, hey, if you will play during the day, get to the end while I'm at school, I will give you my Mass Effect 2 pre-order bonus, which I think was like a black hole gun. It was something like that. It was a very cool thing that he didn't have. And he agreed. And he played all day, three days in a row. Got to the end. I dropped in and earned the achievements at the very last second. And then, honestly, I couldn't wait for Mass Effect 2 to come out. And I ended up canceling my pre-order and buying the Army of Two, the Devil's Cartel. And I absolutely stabbed him in the back. He still talks about it to this day. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I made out like a bandit getting those achievements done and he did not get the mass effect 2 pre-order bonus josh if you're watching this i'm sorry Ooh, now we make it to hollow knight i'm gonna be completely honest with you this is the hardest game i have ever completed and it is not even close i know some people think that hollow knight's not that hard and you're right if you've played hundreds of hours it's probably not that hard but as someone who's not very good at 2d games and is a noob at platformers i struggled a ton with this game and mainly for one achievement so there are a few achievements that people know hollow knight for and the one that really got me was to embrace the void it's basically like a 42 boss rush where you're in one life with a couple of rest zones you have to kill every boss in the game plus a few others in a row. It's basically like a permadeath run. And man, I practiced and played this for like 50 or 60 hours to be able to actually take this achievement down. And as you'll see at some point, I'll put out a video on this game, but this is by far the hardest thing I've ever done in a game. It's just, it's so difficult. There is another achievement that people know in this game called Steel Heart which is a permadeath run 
where you have to complete 100% of the game. And, you know, there's a you get a little bit of leeway. There's 112% of things you can do, and you have to complete 100%. So you can leave out things that are really difficult to you. And you have to beat the game in one shot. Now, I think this took me a very long time, but I followed a pretty in-depth guide for, like, the best possible route. So I didn't struggle as much with Steel Heart. I didn't do my own routing, though. So it makes sense why that wouldn't be as difficult. But yo, nothing will compare to how much I hated this achievement. And I will say this game is so long that by the time I reached Embrace the Void, I didn't even want to play the game anymore. So take this as a precautionary tale. If you decide you want to 100% Hollow Knight, the Void Heart Edition, and you're on Xbox and not PlayStation, this will take you a very long time, um, unless you want to take advantage of some of the, the exploits that the game has to offer. But if you don't, get buckle up. Okay, you're gonna be playing this for a very long time. I am so proud to have this. I think this is easily the most impressive thing I've ever done. And if you've played it, you know. Well, then we have Five Nights at Freddy's. So I have actually, like I said, I beat this game. It took about three hours, significantly easier than Five Nights at Freddy's 3. But honestly, it's a fun game. If you want to sit down for an evening and you're fine with, uh, with the repetitive nature of the gameplay, you can have fun with Five Nights at Freddy's. It's really not that bad. Now, I haven't seen the movies and I haven't played all the other games. This was a this was a fine completion, even with the rarest achievement in the game being a 0.91%, which has actually gone up quite a bit. It was 0.89 when I got this. So it's moving up. It's becoming unlocked. But this is a fun game. It, it, you know, the gameplay loop run, you know, pretty, pretty repetitive, but I can see people getting enjoyment out of this. And it's a fun completion. And it's it'll scare the, the bricks off you if you jump or startle easily like me. Fallout 3. I'm currently working on this. I am missing four achievements. And I believe I earned my first achievement for this game. Uh, not even, it doesn't even have a time, but 2009, January 2009. I remember getting, I got this game, I think for my birthday. And I had a great time when it came out and I got Xbox Live. Fantastic game. Honestly, the achievement design in Fallout is so good. You've got your missions, you've got your DLCs, you know, your, your objective based. Something I do want to say about Fallout 3, more importantly, besides the fact that I've almost completed the game, I want to talk about the DLC for a second. So in the early days of Xbox, sometimes DLCs would come out and they would be buggy or there'd be glitches and they would get pulled from the store and fixed before being put back up. And I remember being so excited for the second DLC in Fallout 3, The Pit. And of course, by the time I had woken up, the English version of the DLC wasn't in the store anymore. The game was so buggy, they had to take it down. I remember listening to my cousin and, and some friends play it, and they were like having a blast, but it was all buggy and they were losing progress and, you know, stuff wasn't spawning or enemies were doing things they weren't supposed to and not wanting to miss out. And being a Canadian with a little bit of French bonjour, je m'appelle Morgan, I decided I would buy the French version of the DLC. And how hard can it be? I mean, come on, I've taken grade seven French. Well, it turns out it's fucking impossible. If you don't speak the language, you can't play the DLC. Who would have thought? So I bought this goddamn DLC, couldn't play it, and I was sad. I just, I was walking around. The guy was telling me to go places. People were yelling at me and trying to kill me, and I couldn't figure out why, and I had to put it down. I did come back much later with the English version and played through the DLC, had a blast, killed some trogs, collected some steel, good times. 10 out of 10 would not recommend buying a DLC in a language you don't know, but moving on. Next full completion, Dragon Age 2. This is one I am really proud of, and as we'll see, I'm a big fan of the Bioware games, and I know Dragon Age 2 gets a really bad rap. And as you can see, I earned most of the achievements before 2011, and I came back in 2023, last month, and finished out the game for a 11 year difference since my last achievement in the game. Holy smokes. A lot of people weren't a fan of Dragon Age 2, and there's a lot of reasons why that would be the case. I think some of the characters are very compelling, and I think that's the strength of the game. Like, if you're into, like, the RPG action style of game, it's going to get a little bit repetitive. A lot of the environments get, you know, reused. I do think there's a good amount of choice in the game, or illusion of choice, as some people would say, and I think the DLCs are really fun. I'm not going to talk too much on Dragon Age 2 besides the fact that these achievements are unbelievably annoying. 
you basically have to, these are basically collectibles that you have to find and be super careful not to miss because you have to line up multiple quest chains in order to make sure that they unlock 30 hours later into the game, which is why I never completed them. Even though I bought the collector's edition guide when the game came out, even with a goddamn hardcover book, I couldn't fix these, but we got it done. Really happy to have this this game completed. It's one of my favorite series of all time. Definitely not the best in the series. We'll talk more about those later. Ooh, Call of War as Gunslinger. So this is an Xbox 360 arcade game. And if you've never played Call of War as, it's basically like a cowboy sort of cell shaded style shooter. It's very arcadey. It's very fun. I mean, you know, the main series of games is different, but Gunslinger, the arcade version is awesome. Now, I actually did record this to make a video. We'll see if I if I put it together, but I will say that if you have not played this game before and you're looking for a fun 20 to 25 hours for a good completion, you know, only 400 gamer score, you will love this game. The gameplay is super super impactful and I feel like all the achievements are set up in such a way that you're going to enjoy getting them. I mean, the one that obviously sucks is unlocking all the skills in story mode. You basically have to play through the game like two and a third or two and a half times. And even if you do hardest mode and then like the, the next hardest mode that unlocks after that, you still got to play through a little bit after that, which can be annoying. But, you know, maybe if you depending on how you play through the game, maybe you can do it in two. But there are two achievements in this game that were actually really difficult to get. So Legend Among Legends for getting all arcade mode stars. It's basically a score attack mode. And at a 0.6% unlock, you can tell it's even if it's not that hard objectively, it's not easy. And I remember failing at this when I was younger and I came back recently and cleaned it up. And this is such a fun game. I actually think this might be some of the most enjoyable or one of the most uh, enjoyable first person single player games that I've ever played. And the storytelling is so funny. It's all from the, from the point of view of a guy named Silas who is telling these like taller than life tales to a bunch of saloon patrons and nobody actually knows if he's telling the truth. It's all told in sort of this retrospective comedic lens. And it's a really good game. I would highly recommend if you're looking for some some rare achievements uh, and a really good game, this could easily occupy you for you for a week and you could have fun with it. Honestly, like probably a nine out of 10. It's a good, great game, great game. I wanna touch on Gears of War 2 a little. So I have actually even streamed Gears of War 2 and I'm very close to having every achievement in the game. And like I mentioned, my first ever achievement on this account was actually in this game. Now I don't have the dates here for some of these because I played them at various times, but my first recorded one is in 2008, December, which is how I'm reaching that 15 years. When this game gets completed, it will be almost two decades of time slowly put into this. We're missing a few achievements that I'm working through very, very slowly. I've always wanted to complete a seriously achievement. And I think this will probably be the one and only that I complete. So just know I'm coming for this. And you might see something on this game in the future. I think Gears of War might be one of the most sought after, in my opinion, completions that you can have of like a, a classic Xbox title. Having a Gears of War game from the 360 days is very impressive, in my opinion. So I, I want to have one. And as you can see, 2010 to 2023 we're working through them crisis 3 so i actually played this game specifically because the servers were going offline i had never played a crisis game but i do remember you know back in the day people would say crisis was the the benchmarking for all of computers right if your computer can run crisis on you know ultra settings then you're like the best well, i'll tell you what my xbox can sure as shit run it on the highest settings so that was great and i i you know, honestly i had quite a bit of fun with this game it's also one of the first games that I got a bunch of people together for some multiplayer achievements. And normally I wouldn't do this. I just don't care enough to set up boosting sessions for multiplayer achievements. I feel like it just, it, it can be very boring, but I will say that it was so much fun to work through, you know, the ranking and the challenges and the different levels and the, you know, the task-based achievements with a group of people who all wanted them. Just, you know, six people, 12 hours straight it was an absolute blast and honestly the the single player for crisis 3 is pretty cool the main character is an absolute beast in profit and there's not much more you can say about this game it is it's a very standard completion and now that the 
you know, the multiplayer servers are offline. Uh, this is now unobtainable. So I'm, I'm really happy to have this done. If only I could have also had Dante's Inferno done. Quake 2. So Quake 2 is an interesting game because... I saw that it had released and I've never played a Quake game. So to be honest with you, I just ran this uh, on my PC and had a blast. You know, it's it's a really quick completion, especially on PC, uh, especially if you use console commands and give yourself, you know, infinite health, then you can just have a, a 1987 shoot down, shoot out. You have a 1987 shootout and just run around and kill some aliens. You know, I wouldn't play it again, uh, but I will say that I enjoyed the time that I did spend on it. Okay, now we're getting into something a little bit saucy, okay? Max Payne 3. As you can see, I only have 36% of the achievements here, which is nothing impressive, but I do have the rarest or presumably the rarest achievement in the game. The Shadows Rushed Me. Unlock and complete New York Minute Hardcore. So if you've never played Max Payne, it's a very iconic third person shooter game from back in the day on the original Xbox even. I remember playing Max Payne 1 and Max Payne 2, you know, I don't even know, like 16 years ago, maybe. I can't remember when they came out, but I did play them as a, a young tot, a gaming tot. And in order to unlock this achievement, you have to beat the entire game in one sitting with a timer that is always counting down and you have to do it without dying. Now, that sounds incredibly daunting. And I'm gonna be completely honest, the game's not too bad because you're playing on normal difficulty with these restraints. So you do die fast. Me saying normal mode, you could instantly get, get killed. Okay, it happens. It happened to me. I know how much that can suck. But the game is very choreographed, right? So every enemy spawns in the same place every time. And you can, you know, if you've got a good memory, then this achievement's not too bad. Like you, 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 in order to unlock this mode, you have to play through the game like twice anyway. And I remember thinking that at first I thought it would be impossible. I was like, this is going to be really hard. And of course I had to play through the game twice. I unlocked the mode and my confidence sky high. But this is when you realize the biggest barrier for this achievement is that there is a ton of glitches in the game, like just weird bugs and interactions that can kill you. Like your gun doesn't shoot, even though you're pulling the trigger, the game can crash on you, you know, different input uh, operations not working and that's fucked. But I will say one of the most exciting achievements I've ever had the pleasure of hunting. Although this game cannot be 100% completed or I would do it since the multiplayer servers are down. Um, this is absolutely on my, my shelf. The fact that it's only 10 gamer score is unbelievable because this is gonna be harder than 90% of the achievements minimum that I've ever earned, this achievement is harder. But I'm gonna be, Max Payne 3 is a great game. Granted, I wouldn't wanna play through it seven times to earn every achievement unless I could get the 100%. But if you're looking for a really tough challenge and you're looking for a great game, honestly, the story of Max Payne 3 is great and you will have to really push yourself in order to be able to get this achievement. So if you're into that, I recommend it. If you're not, well then don't, definitely don't play this because I remember having dreams dying because I couldn't shoot enemies and then not being able to sleep and then having to go to work the next day. Oh my God, dude. Never going to forget that. Gears of War 3, a game that I will never be able to 100% because of the most ridiculous achievements. Seriously, 3.0. Earning every Onyx medal is unbelievable the amount of time I, to put it into perspective i have like i don't even know like 30 days or something of playtime in gears of war 3 and i have like seven or eight onyx medals and there's like 65 so this is an achievement i unfortunately will never be able to get and most people will never be able to get without like just an unbelievable amount of time boosting at this point it's there's just no one not enough people play this game to ever actually earn this considering it's you know 10 years old 12 years old something like that but something that uh, i find really funny about this game i actually have a picture of me at the midnight release with picking up the box for this game and holy shit i look like a nerd but you know what it's accurate because i am a goddamn nerd but that was in like 2009 so scratch that. That was in 2012. But yeah, Gears of War is a game series. I remember hunting achievements in these multiplayer games just a ton. And back in the day, I loved multiplayer achievements because I've always loved competitive multiplayer. I've been a huge fan of, of, of games like Counter-Strike, Call of Duty, Valorant, Gears of War, Halo. Like, I was a multiplayer guy. And I remember trying to balance achievement hunting with my multiplayer gameplay with my friends. And it was difficult. 
which is why one of the reasons why my gamer score is so low. Ooh, Dead Rising 2 Case West and Dead Rising 2 Case Zero. So these are arcade games from the 360 days that act as prequels and sequels to Dead Rising 2. I won't talk too much about them, uh, but I did make a video on these games and I had a ton of fun. They're, they're pretty short completions being arcade games, but if you enjoy Dead Rising, you will you should certainly play these because I think they add some good pretext uh, to Dead Rising 2 and how some of the events started. And it also gives you a nice uh, sort of epilogue to Dead Rising 2. Really fun games, and I think people could really enjoy them. Okay, so Dead Space 2. Dead Space 2 is actually one of the first games that I did something on the channel for. Now, Dead Space 2 is a really difficult achievement called Hard to the Core. And if you're unfamiliar with it, you have to beat the game on the Hard to the Core mode, which only lets you save three times. So when you actually die, you have to potentially lose like two hours of time. Like I would say if you were to do an entire run of Dead Space 2, the game's probably gonna take you somewhere in the six hour range, maybe longer, six to eight. Um, I'm sure it's gonna vary a little bit. Only being able to save a couple of times, especially being a little bit newer to like the permadeath achievements when I had done this, man, the anxiety and stress is unbelievable. Like I actually don't think Dead Space 2 is that hard of a game, especially if you can, you know, I didn't know the game when I did the achievement. As you can see, complete the game on any difficulty, the first 29, 2011, hard to the core, 4, 25, 20, 23. So it had been a very long time since I played Dead Space 2. So I didn't remember the game. And I think it only took me about five or six tries to get through it, like five or six deaths. And almost all of those happened in like the last two chapters of the game, wiping away like two hours of time. And when you only have a couple of hours to play during the night, dying in something like this is tragic. But I will say, I don't think Dead Space 2 is that bad. I think I'll, I think anyone can get through this realistically. If you have a plan, if you go into it, you know, knowing what to expect and knowing when you want to save, this is definitely reasonable. And I overall, I think Dead Space 2 is a nine out of 10 game, to be honest. And I think the achievements are for the most part, really reasonable. So I think if there's anyone who's looking for sort of an older game to play, Dead Space 2 is so sweet. And this is definitely one of my most proud achievements for sure. Hard to the core is a legendary achievement. People know this achievement. I'm happy to be someone who completed it. And I think anyone out there who really wants it, you can definitely do it. Okay, Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. With only 25% complete, you might be asking why I'm even talking about this game. Well, this has the rarest achievement that I've ever gone for uh, or featured on the channel, which is Mein Lieben. So in order to get this achievement, you have to beat the game on the Mein Lieben difficulty, which to summarize is in one sitting on the hardest difficulty, permadeath, and you have to beat the game. And I actually only played this game for about 28 hours before I was able to complete Mein Lieben. So with an initial playthrough and a bunch of practice, um, I got it and did it in about five tries, five or six tries. And I know this achievement achievement is difficult. Um, if you practice enough though, on, on the sections of the game and you have a plan, you can absolutely tear through this. But man, this is the most stressful achievement that I've gone for by far. When I completed Mein Lieben, I believe the run, including like some time for some breaks, to just breathe. It was about six to eight hours. You know, I'll be honest with you. I got the anxiety, uh, had to go to the bathroom a couple of times, but holy smokes, you definitely need to come into this, this game knowing what you're getting into. Because if you don't know about Mein Lieben, the rest of this list doesn't look too bad. But I can tell you right now, you have to practice and have a plan in order to get this achievement. Super proud to have it. I had a ton of fun playing the game and getting this. And I had a ton of fun editing it as well. So if you wanna actually see what this looks like, uh, it's actually on, it's on the channel. You can take a peek at this one and see what a mind Lieben, what the mind Lieben experience looks like. Now, fun fact, the DLCs in this game also have a mind Lieben difficulty. And I will be going for all three of the mind Lieben DLCs when the time comes. So just know we will be revisiting the mind Lieben, at least for a little bit. But Wolfenstein 2 is a really fun game. Uh, it's just very difficult. I personally don't think it's a 10 out of 10, but I can see why people would call it a 10 out of 10. Alan Wake 1. Now I won't I won't talk too much about this game, but I will say one of the most annoying permadeath achievements to even go for, not even because it's difficult, but because the gameplay of Alan Wake and and platforming explicitly are the reason why this achievement sucks. There's just a ton of platforming like halfway through the DLC. And if you die, you have to restart the entire thing. And even though the game is not difficult on like the easier modes, holy smokes, talk about an annoying achievement. And that's, that's all we're going to say. No punctuation here. Not even a period. 
on to the next thought. Ooh, Fallout 76. So I don't have the completion fully for this game. I'm only at 1,050, but I do have the, the completion for the base game. And I'm going to go back and get these all at some point. But I will say Fallout 76, when it launched, everyone said it was bad. And although I didn't play it during that time, I did put, you know, about 60 hours into the game to get the base completion. And in 2023, honestly, it was pretty fun. If you're looking for a kind of calm Fallout experience, I think you can play Fallout 76 and really enjoy it. And you get to launch nukes. You get to launch your own nukes in the game where war, war never changes. Just think about that and go get the game and start playing. It's not as good as the other Fallout games, but you can have some fun with friends. I highly recommend it. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered. So being a huge Call of Duty fan and already having most of the achievements in the original, I decided to pick up the remastered to just try to get, get them all. And of course, for those that know, the hardest achievement in Call of Duty 4 or Modern Warfare Remastered is the Mile High Club, which is where you have to skydive to safety on veteran difficulty, which is a timed mission where you have one minute and you have to complete this entire like combat sequence before the timer runs out on veteran, where the enemies can just instantly erase you. But I will say, when I was a kid, I thought this was impossible. I didn't even think there was ever a chance I could complete this. But going back as a seasoned gamer, I did this a lot quicker than I thought. And I'll be honest with you, Call of Duty 4 has probably the simplest achievement list out of any Call of Duty game besides maybe Call of Duty 2. But veteran campaigns in Call of Duty will always be frustrating. So me saying that Mile High Club was easier than I expected, it was the, the game in general was frustrating. Just keep that in mind. But it was a ton of fun to go back and just experience an old Call of Duty game again with a modern view. Oh, and next is GoldenEye 007. So I played GoldenEye, you know, on the N64, and I'm sure a lot of you guys did too. And I've watched a lot of GoldenEye speedrunning thanks to my boy Carl Jobst. And I will say that the achievements in this game are, are pretty annoying. It's basically just a set of speedruns. And you have to play with a very specific stick configuration where instead of it being left stick move, right stick look, like every other game, it has to be like a combination of both on each stick in order to increase your speed. And I don't think I can explain it properly, but basically you need to be able to move twice as fast. And because of that, uh, these achievements were super annoying. But I will say there is a bunch of multiplayer achievements, but they can all be played on split screen co-op, which is really cool. I didn't even think they would put that in the game, but there's a ton of really rare achievements in this game. You know, 0.37% for completing this mission, Caverns on double O agent difficulty in nine minutes and 30 seconds or less. And a lot of the achievements just follow this exact pattern, right? To beat a map on a certain amount of time. And I will say I enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought it was really fun because normally it's beat the levels and do a miscellaneous task. It's kind of how achievements go. But this game forcing you to like know the maps to some extent, some of the times are, are lenient and you can just get through them. Some of them are a lot more difficult, especially on longer maps such as caverns. You have to be super careful. And honestly, overall, this was a fun completion. I don't think I would play it again, but I am glad that I went through and, and played this at the start of the year when they re-released it. Oof, my friend Peppa Pig. I was defeated by this game. Okay, so real talk, Peppa Pig, Town Scraper, and Hello Neighbor 2. Um, these are all really easy completions. The only reason I even played these games is when I first got my Series X, achievement notifications wouldn't pop up. And I hated that because I need that dopamine hit. And as a result, I needed to play easy games that I could earn achievements in and check if these achievement notifications were popping. I remember being on hold with like Microsoft support, trying to figure out what the fuck was going on for like maybe seven hours earning achievements and just testing if things would work. Granted, they worked. I figured it out, but holy smokes. So as a result, I got uh, 2080 gamer score for my troubles while trying to make my achievements unlock. And who knows if my friend Peppa Pig will ever be completed. It most likely will, but just know that's why I played it. Not because I'm a Peppa Pig stan. Did I just say Peppa Pig? I meant Peppa Pig, but that's a Peppa moment. <laughs>
So we've got some Walking Dead games here, and I'll probably use this as my time to just talk about the Telltale games in general because I've completed a bunch of them, and I know I'm not the only person, but the Walking Dead games, especially the one on the 360 when it first came out, you know, it, it won Game of the Year against Mass Effect 3. I still think about that day. Uh, I, th I really enjoy the Telltale games. I know some people may see them as grubby. Honestly, I couldn't care less. The games are so good. The stories are so awesome. And overall, I think The Walking Dead as a series is just very good. And I always enjoy playing through them again. So I'll always take the easy 1000 gamer score for just enjoying the games. Ooh, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. So I'm going to bring this one up specifically because I actually played this on PC and earned every achievement. That was actually my first video. And I really like Sekiro. I think the combat is so fluid and amazing. And it's one of the only Souls games that when you learn the mechanics of blocking and pressuring, it's one of the only Souls games that can feel like you've mastered it and you're untouchable. Now, I still have to finish getting the achievements on my Xbox. And honestly, the hardest part about these is grinding the skill points. You have to play through the game like four times to get all the achievements or like three and a half times, depending on how you you want to think about it but there is a bunch of different endings but the skill points themselves when i grinded them i think it took me about eight hours of grinding and i'm sure there are faster ways to do it but man it gets boring just killing the same enemies over and over and over and over again i basically just went into the outskirts and killed a few enemies with backstabs and then ran back rested and repeated for just hours but overall, Sekiro is a, such a good game. Ooh, now we see the Dark Souls games. Okay, we're getting into some of the older games. Now, although I don't have all the achievements in Dark Souls 3, I played a ton of this game. I am a huge Souls fan, as you'll see. And I remember being a Souls fan who really enjoys the PvP, I always liked to just optimize builds and try to fight against other players. And I remember specifically in Dark Souls 3, there is an achievement for finding all of the sorceries and miracles now these achievements are a huge pain in the ass because you have to either join covenants that have very specific requirements in order to actually get into like an encounter that can give you the reward that you need in order to progress the covenant to get these spells now you can farm them via in-game like enemies as well but it takes a really long time and i remember farming the dark moon blade miracle killing the same knights with like maximum luck for like 20 hours of time just to get the spell unlocked now i don't have the achievement for it but i do have have the memories of absolutely slaying people out but this is something that's kind of present in all of the dark souls games you have to collect all of the items is actually the same with dark souls 2 scholar of the first sin in order to unlock all of the pyromancies and miracles you have to actually play through the game to like new game plus 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 maybe it's like the third you have to do three playthroughs basically two and a half playthroughs in order to get to the point where you can unlock these spells and my memory may be a little bit fuzzy but unless you really enjoy the game this can be a huge slog and although i do think dark souls 2 is probably my least favorite souls game i think that the achievements are reasonable for a dark souls game in fact as we'll see i have actually completed dark souls 2 twice which is shocking considering it's my least favorite Souls game. Something doesn't add up. Destiny 1. One of probably my most underrated completions, now that I think about it. Now, I know people played a lot more Destiny than I did. You know, I clocked in at 40 days of playtime, and I know people with much more than me. But Destiny is one of the, the most enjoyable gaming experiences I have ever had. You know, when, De when Destiny 1 first came out, I was sort of reaching the end of my initial achievement hunting time, right? There's, there's a big gap where I basically didn't hunt achievements for years. I just played multiplayer games, but I remember specifically hunting achievements in Destiny 1 and loving every second of it. There's a particular achievement in this game, Flawless Raider. Complete a raid without anyone on your fire team dying. Now, there's a few ways to cheese some encounters, but I actually did this solo. Now, the second raid, the dark below in this game, was a very short raid, right? Because normally, I should say, raids are six-player encounters 
where there's a lot of really difficult bosses and mechanics that everyone has to work together in order to beat. But of course, when you have six people, there's six people that can die. So I decided I would tackle it solo. And I actually completed this by myself. I remember being so pumped. Now, although, you know, this achievement isn't as rare as some of the other ones we've looked at, because, you know, people, a lot of people played Destiny. A lot of people played with really good players. I think this achievement is deceptively difficult because if you have a really good team and everyone knows the encounters, you're going to beat, right? You're going to complete the raid without dying. But that's the hard part. It's just communication and coordination. So doing it solo, it felt even better knowing that the only person I had to communicate with was myself. And, you know, maybe in the future, I could go back and make a whole video on this. If that's something you guys would like to see, let me know. I'm not going to promise it, but I would always love to dive back into Destiny 1 and just get to experience things again. I remember staying up in my very first year of university. The game came out and I played for 24 hours straight to complete the story and hit the soft cap and start to level myself up. Back when it was Dinklebot, Peter Dinklage was the voice actor for the ghost. Granted, that has changed now, but man, the times that I had. Destiny 1 was almost exclusively responsible for making my grades in my first semester of university. Shit. So just know that, Bungie. I did graduate, but it's your fault that things started off slow. So now we've reached my favorite game series of all time, Mass Effect. Now, I have all the achievements in the original three Mass Effect effect games. I did not complete Andromeda, but we'll leave those stories for another time. But what I do want to talk about is the original Mass Effect series. I love these games. And excluding some, you know, minor difficulty achievements, like complete the game on insanity mode, everything else is pretty straightforward, at least in Mass Effect 3. You know, Mass I think in Mass Effect 3, you can basically get through all the achievements in probably two playthroughs without having, you know, any major issues, any major hiccups. And although a lot of people dislike Mass Effect 3 because of how the games and how the series ended, I am completely against that. I could argue till my breath gives out. I think Mass Effect 3 is a phenomenal game with some of the most memorable moments that I've ever experienced in a series. And for those that don't know, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 are a continuous story where when you complete the first game, you can import your save to the second game and all of the choices you made will carry over. And then that continues into three and it's just one long story. It's in my opinion, the best sci-fi series ever created. And Mass Effect 3 being the end, it has some of the, the craziest achievements. As you can see, we have Mass Effect 2 as well here. Something I really liked about Mass Effect 2 is there's a ton of companions in the game and depending on you know who you actually talk to and enjoy your time with you can get extra missions that lead to new achievements so the game really rewards you for putting in time and just enjoying the story as a whole which is something i feel like a lot of games don't do if you did 30 hours of side content in another game you might not get any achievements but in mass effect all the achievements are tied to being able to experience the full game. And all I want to do is talk about Mass Effect. In fact, I need to play the Mass Effect Legendary Edition because Mass Effect is just my favorite game series by far. But the achievements in Mass Effect 2 and 3 are a very easy in my opinion. But when you get to the first game, Mass Effect 1, the achievements become a lot more annoying. So although there still are achievements, you know, such as complete the game on insane mode, you get these achievements for completing a majority of the game with specific squad members. And the way that this worked is you would have to get a companion and then complete like 70% of all of the missions in the game with that person in your party, which meant with six companions, three full playthroughs, potentially. You might be able to s squeak one out uh, if you highly optimize in one of the earlier playthroughs. But as you can see on some of the dates that I unlocked these achievements, I did them over time with the first achievement being in 2017, sorry, the last achievement. And the first achievements predated me even having online, but basically 2009. And something that Mass Effect 1 did that was really cool is although they added in these achievements for having you complete the you know majority of the game with specific companions, which is a great way to become connected to the characters, you know, these achievements almost push you to experience the games in a specific way or get, forcing you to add context to your knowledge of the game by being able to interact with characters at different times. They also had achievements for using all of the different abilities. But I remember at the start of the game, there's like a an information hub 
right? You can talk to it and it'll give you information about where the different you know, locations are in the city or the citadel, I should say. And you can actually target it and use these abilities on that like information hub. So you don't actually have to play through the game with the specific classes. As you can see, I unlocked all of these on this like the same day and that's why. But last thing I'll say about Mass Effect and I would highly recommend anyone who really in enjoys in-depth stories and, and uh, hunting achievements, I think the achievements in Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 3 are really well designed. And I think the games are even more well designed and I couldn't recommend it more. I still play through Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3 once a year. I do a full playthrough of the games and I just kind of relive that nostalgia. And one day I will play through the legendary edition of the game and add that to the collection and have every available achievement in all of the Mass Effect games, but we're not there yet. Metro 2033 Redux. So the Metro games are really cool first-person shooter post-apocalyptic games, and I don't even remember the achievements being that hard, even in the harder difficulties, but I will say that the graphics are really good, and I feel like they nailed the atmosphere of sort of post-apocalyptic Russia and the subway systems. Not everybody is going to agree with that, obviously, but I think the achievements are pretty straightforward with your, you know, kill X amount of enemies, collect the different collectibles, on specific levels, do something specific. Yeah, you know, they're very straightforward. And I think it made the game just incredibly enjoyable. I remember reading a magazine when I was a kid. I had a, a Game Informer magazine on Metro 2033, long before it released, and seeing pictures of the guy with like a double barrel shotgun fighting off like uh, the Nocesilis, or Nocesilis? I don't remember what they're called, but fighting them off with a double barrel shotgun in the subway. And I was so excited to actually sit down and play the game. I remember I couldn't even focus. I would just read the same article from the Game Informer magazine during my social studies class in like grade seven. And with some easy achievements, this is a, in my opinion, a really fun 1000 to get. And I would recommend anyone who's looking for a, an enjoyable first person shooter game. I think you can find that in Metro 2033. And then we reach Dark Souls 1. Like I said, huge Dark Souls fan. Um, People say Dark Souls 1 is the hardest game to earn all the achievements in or earn the platinum trophy. I unlocked these over time, so I can't say if I agree with that necessarily, but obviously having to play through the game two or three times to, you know, get all of the sorceries and more importantly, uh, acquire all the rare weapons. This achievement requires you to play through the game two and a half times because there's one boss soul that when you collect it, you can turn three different weapons into like other weapons. That's a horrible way to describe it. But within this game, you can basically ascend a standard weapon to a special weapon using a boss soul. And there's a particular boss soul weapon that can be ascended into three separate weapons. So in order to have them all, you have to play through the game three times, get his soul. And I will, something I want to say about Dark Souls, because I think this is funny, considering now I have all the achievements and I really enjoyed the games. I remember when the trailer for Dark Souls 2 was shown at the Game Awards, I believe. I remember watching it on my TV. I believe it might have even been the Spike Game Awards at that point. Right, we weren't even into this new age. I remember seeing the trailer for Dark Souls 2, and I thought it was the trailer for Dragon Age 2. And I was so excited. And then they showed that it was Dark Souls 2, and I remember being so pissed off. I was like, there's no way. Nobody even likes Dark Souls. It's a terrible game series. Why would you try to reveal that now? We need Dragon Age 2. And this actually inspired me to go and look at the achievements for Dark Souls. This is going to, I know this sounds a little weird, but I went and looked up the achievements for Dark Souls and saw, you know, acquire the best weapon through magic reinforcement, through divine reinforcement, things like this. And more importantly, the covenants discover the blade of the Dark Moon Covenant and the Grave Lord Servant Covenant. And these sounded so cool to me. I bought Dark Souls 1 the next day and started playing it like and i just wanted to i wanted to hunt the achievements this is back when i was really into to grinding for for various games and different achievements and that's actually what started my dark souls adventure right all all these years ago was seeing the dark souls 2 trailer being pissed off that it wasn't dragon age 2 and then looking up the achievements for dark souls 1 and seeing how cool the game sounded to play and here we are 2023 i'm firmly a souls fan here's the original dark souls 2 which I believe has the exact same list as the remastered one. But just to show you, I did play a lot of Dark Souls 2. Ooh, Dragon Age Origins. One of my favorite RPG games of all time. 
and easily one of my favorite games that I've ever hunted achievements in. So Dragon Age Origins has, in my opinion, one of the most enjoyable games to hunt achievements in, assuming you enjoy the game. I typically hunt achievements in games that I like. I don't just hunt achievements for the sake of I need the I need the completion. But Dragon Age has all of the things that I personally like in a game. Multiple endings with an achievement associated, multiple romances. Again, I love this type of thing. And I love that it says across all playthroughs. It's very clear that this can be done cumulatively. It doesn't have to be done in, in at once. Uh, set foot in every area in the game. I remember getting this achievement and just running all the way around the map, making sure that like the entire fog of war was gone, right? Which is that dark area that creeps in around the edges of your map. And I remember I got this achievement when I wasn't at 100% discovery of all locations. I think I was at like, 97.2 or something like that uh, before walking into the final boss now i don't know if perhaps the in-game counter was wrong or what was going on but this made me happy the other achievement that really made this annoying was this achievement for killing a thousand dark spawn now it doesn't say if it can be done cumulatively or not and in the early days of like achievement hunting forums i remember looking and and trying to figure out, can I do this over the course of multiple playthroughs? Does it have to be in one? What's the deal? And a ton of misinformation. In fact, I still don't know the answer to this, but what I did do is farm a, a very late game encounter, run, kill as many enemies as you can in this like final battle area and just hope you don't die. And eventually, boom, done, a thousand dark spawn were killed. We unlocked the achievement. Now, something else that this game does that maybe people don't know, but as it says in the name of the game, Origins, there are six, six distinct openings in the game, right? As you can see here, you've got Dwarf Commoner, Dwarf Noble, uh, the Magi origin story, and there's two other ones, which is really cool. Not only does it have four endings, it has six openings that will vastly change how specific characters will interact with you throughout the game. No, I don't know any other game that's done this successfully as Dragon Age Origins did. This is easily one of the best games that I've ever played. And specifically, if you like games like Baldur's Gate, which is obviously just one game of the year, Dragon Age Origins is right up your alley, especially if you love lore and you love achievement hunting. And besides some of the crazy DLC that there is in this game, something else that it does is all of the main plot points have multiple paths that can branch, right? At this achievement here says sided with the Templars in Broken Circle, and then we've got sided with the mages in Broken Circle. So as you play through the game, you will get the option to pick sides that will not only change who you have fighting the war with you, you also unlock the achievements that kind of show who your allegiance is aligned with. And I think that's really cool. I think that makes for a really enjoyable experience playing through a game and being rewarded with an achievement based on a decision that you made. I'm a huge fan of this type of thing. And easily, in my opinion, one of the best achievement lists out there is Dragon Age Origins. Now, a series that I've touched a few times in various aspects is Darksiders. Now, I don't have all the achievements in Darksiders 2, as you can see, but with Darksiders 1, I do. And I think this game is super underrated. If somebody asks me for like a an adventure game or an action game that's underrated, something they probably haven't played, I always point them to Darksiders. The only way I can really describe it is you play as the Horseman of the Apocalypse. Every game you play as a different Horseman, and the game acts as almost a mix of God of War because of how brutal the combat is, like, you know, the PlayStation 3 God of War games, and Zelda because of the puzzles and the different aspects of unlocking new equipment and being able to go back to previous areas and use it to gain access to new things and new items. And the achievements are pretty straightforward, right? You've got your achievements for killing things in certain ways. You've actually got, you know, I call it a platinum achievement, you know, complete everything and you get an achievement for that. You've got, you know, your different difficulties. And I think one of the cool things about this game is Darksiders 1, as spoiler free as possible, actually takes place after the subsequent games, even though it's the first one you play. And if you play through it, you'll know what I mean. But with, you know, it's got the, uh, the different types of achievements for your collectibles, you know, your, your task based stuff and for killing different bosses which is one of the things that is super cool in this game is you kill the different bosses just like in God of War. It feels really good. Now, Darksiders, phenomenal game series. Definitely look it up if you're looking for a really exciting adventure game where you get to play as the Horseman of the Apocalypse. Need I say more? Ooh, Left 4 Dead. So I don't have all the achievements in this game, but I'm going to be getting them. But Left 4 Dead actually has some of the most annoying achievements and difficult achievements I remember getting in the early 360 days. One example is the untouchables. 
no survivor takes damage after contacting the rescue vehicle. Well, the people I played with were not good at not shooting people. I remember in order to get this achievement, we had to play on the dead air level and do something where you melee a minigun besides the plane or beside the plane that's gonna take off and take you to safety. And you'd be able to jump on it and launch yourself up and land on the plane. And then all four of you just sit together and huddle and melee each other so that you can't be grabbed by special infected. And with that strategy, we were, we were able to get this achievement done. But oh my God, it took so long. And I will say this, Left 4 Dead has some sweet achievements. And the hardest one, one which I plan on getting very, very soon, is what are you trying to prove? Survive all campaigns on Expert. I definitely completed some of these when I was younger. I do not remember which ones I completed. So we're going to have to get them all. And one of my favorite memories from playing this game and just kind of getting in to the achievement hunting scene, my name at the time was Glorion97. And I remember loading into my first game of Left 4 Dead, so excited to play. I'm, you know, 11 years old. And the guy says, yo, what's your name? Are you Glory Hole 97? And I confidently said, yes. I was so excited to have a nickname. And now that I know that Glory Hole 97 is not the nickname you want, I will confidently say, fuck you, buddy. Fuck you. Ooh, next we have one of my only early Call of Duty completions, which is Modern Warfare 2. Now, I played so much Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare 2 and Call of Duty in general, the multiplayer, I almost never touched the campaign. But something about Modern Warfare 2 was different, and I believe it was Spec Ops. I think Spec Ops kept me just excited to hunt. And if you don't know, there's a bunch of different levels. I believe there might be 23. And each level, you have to complete it, getting three stars, unlocking with special criteria, and you'd be able to get this achievement. And again, this was different because most Call of Duty games up until this point really didn't have special modes, right? We had zombies, right? But before that, it was just you do the campaign and you get all the achievements. But Spec Ops changed the game. In fact, Modern Warfare 2 changed the game for me. I remember staying home sick for the first week that the game came out so that I could be the first person on my friends list to get 10 nukes and prestige. And although I completed that and got my 1000 gamer score eventually, I did get grounded for a very, very long time when my parents found out that I was faking sick. So keep that in mind if you're going for all the achievements in Modern Warfare 2. They're pretty easy, but you're gonna need a good partner and don't fake sick to get them done. The only Elder Scrolls completion I have is in Oblivion. Most people think, you know, Elder Scrolls, they think Skyrim. For me, I think Oblivion. And I think the achievements in this game do a really good job at being annoying. I'm just kidding. The completion in, in Oblivion is actually pretty straightforward. You know, there is a DLC or you have to, you know, leave a save at some point in, in order to not have to play it through all again. But in general, Oblivion has a really good achievement list. Most of it requires you to join a guild and just reach the maxed rank in that guild, which has you do things such as fighting in the arena, stealing stuff, and just killing people. In fact, I would even love to go back and earn all the achievements in Oblivion again because of how much I enjoyed the game. I remember this is one of the first times I sat down and in the summer and just played through with the game in an entire week trying to get all the achievements. Now, something I did not know about Oblivion back in the day is in order to level up, you need to sleep. So I played through and got all the achievements at, I think, level two. So if I was to play through it again, I would most certainly not do that part. But with all the, the different quests, it's a pretty straightforward completion. And if you've played the Elder Scrolls Skyrim, you should definitely go back and play Oblivion. I think it's a really easy completion. And, you know, after about 50 or 60 hours, you'll be done and you'll be able to add this to yours. Avatar The Last Airbender The Burning Earth. So this game only has five achievements. And this is definitely the easiest completion I have. Every achievement just requires you to get like a higher combo than you had previously. And you can do this on like the second level of the game. In fact, I remember playing through this and getting all the achievements done in maybe 15 minutes. I think the bigger story with this game, because anyone who plays this can get every achievement in the game. It, the fact that only 74% of people have a 50 counter is not because they weren't capable of getting it. It's because they stopped liking the game and they just got off. That's the real reason. But I remember having the option, my parents were gonna take me to buy a game at Walmart. And the option was between the Avatar and Turok. And I remember picking the Avatar specifically because everyone online said it was easy achievements, which is a terrible reason to buy the game. This was the grubby of grubbies during the 360 era. And I'm sorry to say that I most certainly was one of the people who bought it specifically because of the achievements, but I was also like 12. But if you're looking for easy achievements, this game will get you there immediately. Well, that's it. That's a quick 
flashback into my 15 years of gaming. That was also a very long rambling cut down into a much smaller amount of rambling. But if you're here and you were able to see some of the things that I had done and you have some of your own memories and stories to share, I would love for you to share with them in the comments.